Hello. So I'd like to welcome you all to the Northwest Art Center uh, to the reception and online viewing for the International Paperworks 2022. Uh, it's my joy to be able to have everybody here online and in person. Uh, our schedule for tonight, uh, we'll be doing a walkthrough uh, of the exhibition for the first 30 minutes. We have our jurors' remarks and awards presentation at 7 o'clock, uh, and then Q&A uh, and general QA and more of the exhibition uh, after that. If you guys have any questions um, or want to talk during just the you know, walkthrough or chat, that's absolutely fine. We'll maybe we do the Marks, uh, and then we'll put it up for discussion. And I should introduce myself. Um, it's great to be able to see everybody in the chat. I'm Greg Vettel, uh, the director of the Northwest Star Center. And uh, with us tonight, we have Sally Mitchell, our exhibitions coordinator, numerous interns, students, volunteers, etc. So we'll go ahead and start with the gallery walkthrough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the last. Gotcha. Yeah. So I didn't have two problems. Two people who I know don't look like the people I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think you look really nice. Yeah. Like, nice. But Tom, thanks for the sure. <laughs> cool. I think I still have to. Yeah. Looking here. 
Hi. And so good you could be here. Yeah. I was really confused when I look at your your backdrop. Yeah, I'm I'm playing it up a little bit, the virtual aspect. <laughs> I, like I might be here, I might not. Should we get together? Just tonight? Yeah, yeah, that's all Yeah, I think we just. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, 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 did you get a What's that? Just like I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you seen the TikTok everyday change? You know, talk about that, uh, not COVID, but something like the same thing. Yeah. 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 But they read, oh, they oh. the song. Oh, I have it. It's pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have fun. Yeah. Yes, the virus appearance. Uh, uh, there's a window, I think it's straight in front of you. So those are one of the Yeah. Just stop. Yeah. You can kind of get a I'll just scared of it. At least, I mean, it's fine. I'll just like a student. I mean, I'll just, I'll get the bench.
Okay, so it's called that because it has some very fall tumble colors. <laughs> This is Just 
All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, in just a moment here, we'll uh, I'll turn the floor over to Susanna. Uh, and we'll have a few things that I'll, I'll say first. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody uh, online and in person who's oh, in attendance so uh, right? at the yeah, exhibition. Oh, uh, thank you. Have uh, mm -hmm. some thanks to say. And I'd like to start. Uh, so we're here at the, the 51st uh, annual uh, Paper Works Curate Exhibition at Minot State University. Um, and it's wonderful to be able to welcome you here uh, on this, you know, starting the next 50 years of exhibitions at Minot State University. Um, I'd like to first thank everybody that's here tonight for attending and for looking at the art and for joining us online as well. Um, and I'm kind of excited about where um, we're going to journey next with this show and what art is going to take us there. Uh, so it's really fascinating to see uh, the work from all over the United States and all over the world, in fact, it comes to our little corner in our jury show here at Minot State University. Um, I'd like to thank the Northwest Art Center staff and interns and students that helped us uh, put together the show from receiving it over uh, the holidays, um, unpacking. One of our favorite parts about the exhibition is being able to uh, unwrap all of the presents that we get uh, over uh, the, the holiday break. Uh, and then, of course, organizing, installing, and you know, putting on the exhibition. Uh, I'd like to thank juror Susanna Crum for curating a truly wonderful show this year. Um, there's so many uh, great, in terms of diversity of technique and medium um, style with the exhibition. You know, it, it serves as a cohesive whole, and it's really a wonderful show. Um, I'd also like to thank the North Dakota Council on the Arts. Um, without their support, uh, we wouldn't be able to put on our wonderful programming uh, that we have here at the Art Center and, and exhibit shows such as this. Um, most importantly, though, uh, I'd like to thank all of the artists that entered the exhibition um, and all the artists that are exhibiting in the exhibition because it's not it's not hyperbole to say that you know, obviously without their wonderful work um, and energy and, and perseverance that they put into their work that we wouldn't have the show and we wouldn't have the arts in general. So that's probably my biggest heartfelt thank is to everybody who entered the exhibition um, and, and put their work out for us to, to do here for the show. I'll go ahead, I'll turn it over to Susanna now and uh, you can tell us about your process and, and how you approach the show. Sure. Well, thank you, Greg, and thank you, everyone uh, who's joining us in the physical world and the remote one. Um, I thought it was really interesting seeing the exhibitions through another person's eyes, through another person's phone. Um, I know that I've really missed seeing art in person uh, over the past more than, you know, two years, uh, and being able to learn about new artists, artists who are new to me, practicing oceans away or many states away. Um, I think many artists have felt a profound um, sense of distancing and disruption of their routines and isolation. And um, it was something really meaningful to me to be able to look at all the beautiful entries and um, 
think about the amount of experimentation and material exploration and concept um, that has happened in the past two years by the artists who submitted work. Uh, I think that was one of the uh, guidelines was that all the work submitted had to be created within the past 24 months. And so much has happened and not happened. Um, <laughs> and last time I was at Minot, um, I was fortunate to have work featured in the Northwest Arts Center um, for a show and to work closely with the students. And so I knew that the works that I was selecting were gonna have the opportunity to be shown in this really beautiful state of the art space. Um, it's such a lovely um, series of spaces to show work. And so as I was going through all the wonderful submissions, I actually kind of took screenshots <laughs> on my computer as I went. Um, and I am in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, even though my virtual background makes it appear maybe that I'm here. Um, but I was so far away and trying to imagine my recollections of what the space was like and how different works would speak to one another and thinking about putting artists in conversation with one another, um, maybe for the first time ever, and maybe for the only time um, we'd see those works in direct combination with one another. And so it means so much to me to be able to see it in person, to get the sense of scale, um, the tangibility of all the different media um, works on paper and works of paper. I think about the um, sculptural work, the book-based work, that big accordion that we saw um, near one of the doorways, um, the repurposed materials that are showing up, um, the ways that artists are pointing to things in our everyday life that we might otherwise miss. And I'm just so grateful uh, to have gotten a chance to know so many new artists, more than the 46 featured in the show. Um, I was, I'm so grateful. So thank you all so much for joining us. And um, I hope you enjoy the show nearly as much as I have um, throughout this entire process. <laughs> So uh, next, what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll go through the uh, awards that were chosen for the exhibition. Um, so Susanna selected uh, a number of uh, awards of merit and then a best of show uh, for the exhibition. Um, we also would normally present uh, our purchase awards at this time, but however, due to some extenuating circumstances at the university, um, and I don't, as you can see, I'm the only faculty member here in attendance right now. <laughs> um, but we will we will be making the purchase awards public uh, at a, a little bit later date uh, before the end of the exhibition. Um, so I'd like to start with our first pair of awards, and um, it was wonderful to see uh, the chosen for the exhibition. It was also really cool to see the merit awards, and um, perhaps Susanna, when we announce these, um, we can show. Um, I think I have a full camera going around to show this, but we can talk a little bit about it, maybe what you found about this artwork that spoke to you. Um, so first, our first mirror award um, is uh, multi-plate etching. Uh, the title is 20K More, 20K Less, and it's by Brandon Williams, Nashville, Tennessee. And I'll try to try to highlight on our overview here and see. Okay, there we are. So I'll spotlight that. Oh, here it is. So again, this is um, 20K more, 20K less brand new. I was really curious about the title, um, thinking about what that could possibly mean, the 20K. I think about like 
renovations and quotes and costs, and maybe I'm missing something obvious that it's referring to maybe in pop culture. Um, but I, I loved the indoor outdoor um, kind of mashup that we're seeing here and thinking about, I know what my life has been like <laughs> lately is it's like, I'm in my house or I'm in my backyard and maybe that's it. And I'm um, really impressed with the combination of techniques here, um, that strong monochrome and then the more watercolor like um, runs of color that pop up in between. Really nice combinations of textures. Yeah, I was really excited with this print. Coming back, I swear. <laughs> um, I, I I thought that um, also I, I do have the, the artist statements, and I don't know. Um, we might have some artists that are in attendance that can speak to them, but um, I wanted to read Brian Williams, uh, or I'm sorry, Brian, Brandon Williams, artist statement uh, concerning uh, the piece. So. Um, and it's not maybe piece specific, but uh, he says that I'm inspired by areas and the history within them. I'm interested in time and how it visually affects locations, creating an atmosphere that emphasizes the past while capturing the complexity and beauty of decay or growth is a major theme in his work. The tension between the built environment and the natural environment and how the two compete over the years against each other is fascinating. So, um, I do have some copies of the artist statements. I did upload one to the chat as well. So if you're interested, we can refer to these. Um, we can go ahead and go to our next uh, merit award. Um, we'll have to go into our inner gallery space for this. Uh, so the second merit award is a mezzotint, um, Whitfield at Greensboro by Jacob Crook of Starkville, Mississippi. This will be one of the, the two pairs of mesotents on the wall. Have to try to break through the reflections. Yeah, I'm interested in the actually seeing these works uh, right one after the other. Um, they're both, there's such a strong implied narrative. And I think Jacob Crook describes in his artist statement, you know, where he likes to place the viewer kind of in between in a storyline. And uh, for something, you know, I, I make prints and teach printmaking. And I know that mezzotint is one of the most labor intensive where you're um, burnishing away the surface of a often copper plate that has a really dense texture applied to it. And so you're really erasing and smoothing out areas and that's how you create your highlights. And I just thought this was a beautiful, um, really masterful uh, work here. Was it's it's uh, it's one of the things that we noticed with the exhibition too is that we do have um, quite a few mezzotints in the show uh, in that process and they're all all quite wonderful. Uh, so our our third merit award uh, is for Los Niños Tambien Sufren. It's an etching uh, by Marco Hernandez, Wichita, Kansas. This is also one that's just in the inner gallery there. There's quite a lot of detail in this piece, and I'm glad that we can get in to see it so that you can see it uh, online. Yeah, so for those of you um, just learning about printmaking processes, this is another 
um, intaglio work. So like mezzotint, but this is uh, created with a, a needle tool on a metal plate. So that's how we get all these really um, finely rendered details. I loved in this print the expressions on the figures' faces, their relationships to one another, um, that some of them, I, it seems like they almost don't know the other ones there. They become um, symbols or things, that are elements that are like mixed by accident or by happenstance or by erasure and historical loss or political strife. I found it really engaging seeing the way that they were related in this field. Marco's information and part of his statement is also in the packet of materials. Um, we'll go ahead and I'll move to uh, our next merit award, which is um, another print. Uh, this one, photo polymer right here. Uh, the title is Webb's Crossing Northwest. It's by Nicholas Ruth, Rochester, New York. Don't worry, we we'll have a few shots. So. <laughs> So from what I understand, these are um, also in Talio prints, but created photographically. And um, a photopolymer gravure would be um, not on a metal plate, but a, a plastic or polymer one. And I was so impressed with the clarity of the shifting values and forms. I love the idea that something so mundane as the back of street signs could become um, these almost architectural monuments <laughs> as seen from the roadside, maybe going on the wrong side of the, like wrong direction on the road. <laughs> There's a slight foreboding there as well. But I thought these were so beautifully executed, you know, working with um, photographic techniques in printmaking and alternative processes, uh, you're in for a lot of battles with these subtle mid-tones and mid-range values, the light gray, medium gray, dark gray. And these are just really luscious and lovely. In, in uh, Nicholas Ruth's artist statement, he says that signs are an integral part of how we navigate our experience. Uh, in the realm of semiotics, a sign is the site of representation, one thing standing for others. And in sturdy declarations about what is and is not possible or the way things are, signs mean much more than the text that they carry. Um, and then, of course, the reverse of that. The awkward and beautiful, the backs of signs are supposed to keep their mouths shut. But looking at the backs of signs, you can hear the weight of hauling and holding the message and of the resistance through transmission that is the difference between what is meant and what is understood. Okay, uh, okay. so we'll move to our, our final merit award uh, is um, a drawing. And this is charcoal on paper. The title of the drawing is Wyoming Coal Number no. 2, just by Kathleen Thune. Central South Carolina. Yeah, so I think with this, um, as a, a Kentucky native, um, I, I think a lot about coal and its social political meaning. Um, Wyoming coal, uh, referring to something very specific, history of extraction and impact on society. Um, I, I wanted to mention to everyone that when I was jurying the show, uh, the only information I had were the media and the title. So Wyoming Coal as a title gave me somewhat of a hint um, as to the subject matter. Um, but 
you know, now I'm imagining this artist in South Carolina. What, what did she do in Wyoming? Where, did, how did she get here? This almost looks like she's crushed it up and thrown it onto a sheet of white paper to study. Um, there's, there's so much to think about. It's beautifully rendered. Um, I, I loved the light and shadow and the fact that you could be looking at massive landforms here rather than something really close up these tiny particles. Thank you, Susan. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and we'll um, announce our, our best of show uh, for the exhibition. Um, the best of show award, uh, we, we always are, are really excited for the best of show award because it, um, it gives us an opportunity to welcome that artist back to the Art Summit uh, for a solo exhibition. Um, the paired uh, exhibit that's on display now with the Paperworks exhibition is in fact one of those Best of Show Award winners uh, from 2021, Eric Wallace. Um, and the Best of Show Award this year um, is also for a mesotint. Uh, the medium is a mesotint with applied earth pigments. Uh, the title of the work is Butterfly Sister Dancing for the Little Ones. And the artist is Linda Whitney, Valley City, North Dakota. It's the middle piece of the, the trio of mesotints here. So I was really blown away by these works. Um, they're really big for mesotints. So I mentioned before how incredibly labor intensive, intensive it is applying that velvety texture to a metal plate and then progressively erasing and smoothing to create highlights and form. And uh, the applied earth pigments seem like such an innovation to me and match the format so well. And the textures of the mesotint with the application of the color is just really exciting. And the subject matter is just rendered in a way that um, made me think that this the maker had an experience with this feeling of this dance or a, a close relationship to um, traditional dance. Um, so I'm now I'm looking, this is, you know, this evening along with you, I'm looking at these artist statements. And I think that Linda Whitney says that her partner is a dancer, married to, to a traditional dancer. I spent many years attending powwows, learning and appreciating the different dances, styles of regalia and meanings behind the symbols and traditions. And so there's something so um, specific and personal about these images and they're just beautifully made. And I thought, you know, this, I wouldn't wanna miss the opportunity to see a solo exhibition. Um, of this artist's work. Thank you, Susanna, very much. Um, <laughs> it's, it's uh, we'll, we'll look forward to it. It's actually, it's interesting. Uh, so Linda Whitney uh, was a professor at Valley City State University here in North Dakota. And she's had a long history with uh, exhibitions in the state and the art center. We're familiar with her work and we have uh, a, a few of her, many of her works actually in the collection. So we might have something special planned when we invite her back uh, to the art center for a, a solo exhibition. Um, yeah, I realize now, yeah, the, the ties are amazing. And that's something that, of course, you know, wasn't, it couldn't be on my radar since I, I didn't have knowledge of the makers or their places. Um, that's always, so that's like serendipity to me. It's always kind of fun, too, to discover, like, after, like, and, and sometimes maybe it draws connections with, oh, yeah, okay, with, with who you selected or the artist and the artwork and learning about it. It's, um, uh, at this point, uh, we can open it up for any questions. So if there's anybody online uh, or in person here at the Art Gallery that has any questions for Susanna or um, myself or would like to see more of a specific piece uh, or maybe has a question about a specific work.
And we don't all have to speak at once. I am a teacher. I will call on people. Yeah, yeah, and and if you uh, if you don't want to ask anything now, if you want to just ask something later on of uh, the artists or in attendance or Susanna, um, we can certainly do that too. Uh, we will we'll continue with a walkthrough of the exhibition so that you can see the the space. Um, we might give you a sneak peek of uh, Aaron Wolitz's solo exhibition. It's just in the other half of the space that you're seeing now, um, but you'll have to tune back in two weeks to, to see that in full. <laughs> I'll go ahead. Um, one of the things I'd like to say uh, about the exhibition that uh, is really um, wonderful uh, is that uh, in the exhibition, so you may have seen in my email, uh, or um, I will send out some press materials to all of the artists, but we have work from artists in Australia, um, France, the United States, uh, and also Canada in this year's exhibition. So it's wonderful to get such a range of artwork from artists all over the world. Greg, do you think this is going to be the new mode of working, um, really emphasizing international submissions? Um, we we have uh, so the the exhibitions in their previous form when they were entitled the Americas exhibitions, um, they have actually been open to international entrants uh, since the early '90s, and we've always had a few. Um, each year, but in the past few years, we've had many more inquiries as to whether or not the show is open to international artists and what, you know, what the exhibition is, is this something that we can enter, and we felt that, I mean, the, the exhibition, the jury exhibition has gone through numerous name changes over the years, um, and we felt that just to make that more apparent and to maybe just broaden the scope and the feel, because um, we're all in the same uh, and that it could just be an international exhibition be titled that and not only be more apparent to artists that what's open to international entries, but have that just general feel of bringing us closer together. Uh, one of the things that came about because of COVID was making the exhibition reception and openings and viewing the exhibition online um, more in our in our minds and on the forefront and doing this because of COVID um, primarily as a way to be able to get people into the gallery and to see the show I don't think that we'll go back I always want to be able to have artists because of it being an international show and, and have work from all over obviously we're not going to have everybody that's going to be here in person and I think that that's one of the things that we're going to keep and you know maybe that's part of the spirit behind uh, changing the exhibition title as well. Well I I don't know if you can hear me I hope so. Uh, yep. Hey, thank you. I, I, I'm on this iPad and I don't think I, I don't know how to type into your chat uh, while I'm here. So I'm just going to say thank you all so much for this. Looks like a really beautiful show and I love your merit choices. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. So we'll keep, we'll keep looking at the exhibition and, and if, uh, so we have everybody that's online is on a, a screen out here and so we have that camera, but if there's a piece that you, you want to look at or, or closer, you can put it in chat, I'll bring the chat up so we can see that. Um, and feel free to, to talk to one another or to, to ask questions of Susanna.
And I do, I've also mentioned that the, the recording of the reception here, and then also um, Susanna is going to be giving a presentation in our art seminar series at Minot State University next Friday. Um, both of those will be um, on our, our Facebook page and our YouTube channel if you'd like to view them at a later time. So by being by being remote, the only thing that you're missing out on is being here in person, but also the good news that we have. I think just to, I guess I'll talk a little bit more. I would love to answer questions too. Um, but I'm a practicing artist um, myself, and I make sculpture and uh, some video based work and printmaking um, kind of across the range of media. I run a printmaking studio of my own um, that's in the first floor of a building where I also live. And I am really as an artist, very attracted to applying to juried exhibitions like ones like these um, that are juried by other artists. And I think that it's exciting to be able to, you know, for the juror to get to know new artists, but then also to become aware of new creative practitioners who are acting as jurors, um, curating works, curating shows. Um, I think that there's so much growth that we can do as artists in organizing um, shows in a variety of contexts, artist run spaces, my friend had a one car garage that she would curate shows out of and she was a painter, you know, so um, really thinking about one's role in an artistic community and activities like this one um, as being something that's such a source of growth for me um, and really thinking about uh, international community at large of people working with paper. So photographically, in a hand-drawn way, digital, analog, um, there's so much to go from. So I learned a lot from this show. We have other artists here who are in the exhibition. <laughs> I saw Peter and Debbie. Yeah, hi, I just want to say, um, again, honored to be in the show. I've been in a few uh, shows at uh, my note, but uh, I'm always impressed with as a printmaker with printmaking shows, but in this case, uh, works on paper, which I, I lump into the same thing because I think paper is a great uh, base for art. And uh, you see such innovation in shows like this, printmaking shows and shows that uh, include works on paper uh, that you don't see actually, I, I think in, in shows that are more traditional painting shows. Um, the, the the working with paper, which is very amenable, uh, is also uh, it it challenges you, whether it's just applying an image to paper or using paper as a structure. So, whenever I go to shows like this, I'm always just blown away by the variety of uh, images and the application and how they got to the final point. So. Uh, it's it's so informative to be to see shows like this and to be involved with them. So thank you, and thank you, Susanna, uh, for including me. And uh, You're so hopefully, I'll be here next year. Excellent. Hey, Susanna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See you again. You might not remember me. Um, last time you came to visit MSU. But anyway, I wanted to know if you remember looking at the piece called Summer Storm and what your maybe interpretation of it 
Summer. Summer storm. Is that what you said? Yeah. Um, could you describe it to me real quick? I'm looking at the list here. Pull it up. Yeah, he's gonna pull the picture up. So it's a woodcut, and uh, yeah, there it is. Are you seeing that? Um, I'm seeing the eight paneled. Oh, or no, one that's, uh, it's the one that's titled Mike. Hold on. Yeah, it was my. I have to unspotlight the other image. I'm sorry, Susan. Oh no, that's fine. Oh, you're coming. Okay, you've got it. This one, uh, summer swim. Oh yeah. Yeah, right there. Yeah, this is the lovely one. And yeah, I do remember you all. It's good to see you again. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> it's been a long time. I was wondering if you had, like, uh, if, I don't know if you let the title influence your thoughts on it before you start looking at it, or if you had your own thoughts before looking at the title. Uh, but what, like, did you have any kind of initial thoughts of what that could have been? Well, I think I thought about all the extreme weather that we're having <laughs> and um, in different, different ways in different places where we are. Um, but the destruction of um, nature and the environment and even the littlest things that surround us um, being kind of washed away. I thought this was a really lovely print um, in terms of its, uh, its composition and the way that it uses the key block. So when we talk in relief printing, a key block would be the darkest layer, the black um, specifically having so much detail and really popping in front of the chaotic background. And yeah, so I, I mean, I'm a total, I'm obsessed with labels and artist bios and artist statements. And if I go to a museum, I'm like spending a lot of time reading in addition to looking at the work. So this was a challenge for me, um, just having the title and the medium and that's it to go on. So, but I'm a big believer in titles, um, kind of creating a framework by which we can experience a work or um, that first doorway that we go through into the artist world. Um, so, so yeah, I did think quite a bit about that title. What about you? Oh, right off the bat, I see uh, like Greek mythology and what I'm assuming is this tornado swarm-like uh, thing. I was reading as maybe like the river sticks, and then those boats would be symbolic of crossing the river. This humanoid head reminds me of the ferryman Charon or Chiron. I don't know exactly the pronunciation of the name. But um, like I, I get this kind of mythological slash death slash plague uh, interpretation because of the like the color of the skin plus these. Locusts, I'm guessing, or grasshoppers, they are symbolic plays a lot of the time. So I was thinking like the underworld. And then when I saw it was called Summer Storm, it's completely different from my initial interpretation. And so I was wondering if you had any kind of thoughts uh, that were like just going in. The kind of, I was wondering if you had a similar experience with that. Yeah, I think I'm totally experiencing the, the tumult and kind of sorrow in this image, for sure, the kind of sense of loss. But what a beautiful color palette, too. Yeah, I'm really I love the, the reds and greens together. Yeah. 
It's so good to see you. Remind me of your name again. Alex. Yeah, good to see you. I had a beard the last time you were here. <laughs> you weren't? So, no, I had a beard. Like my. Oh, yeah, you did. I don't look the same anymore. <laughs> Have you made any more lithographs? I've done a few. I've branched into other things as well. I, I don't think I've stayed on one particular process for too long. Uh, yeah. From one to the next. But that's a good way to be. Yeah, well, photography is my main interest right now, but the last uh, printmaking that I really, where I feel like I can, uh, I don't know, say is my favorite method of printmaking would be dichromate. Gum dichromate, uh -huh. um, those two I, I think are the most suitable to my, uh, my style. Well, you know you have some amazing facilities being able to do all those processes, that alternative photography stuff. It's really cool. You're in a special spot to be able to do all that. All right, Santa. Well, really good seeing you again. Yeah, good to see you. And thanks for, uh, for entertaining my, my inquiry. Oh, yeah, for sure. When I looked I was going to say, I think uh, that's such a strong drawing, that plane. But. Yeah, it's a really good one. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Oh. <laughs> Susanna, is there anything else that you'd like to look at in particular? Well, is there a chance we could see the solo show of last year's prize winner? Aaron's Aaron show? Yeah. Thank you, Yoa. Oh, 
I could maybe uh, speak to Sheldon's observation a little bit too. Um, uh, with at least from what we we've seen, we do we do receive a, a large variety of sizes for submissions. Um, and I mean, there's some constraints of when you have a show that's a really show that requires distributing work. Um, there's a consideration with that too for artists. So um, we find that prints, drawings, photographs, um, there are a lot of smaller works that we get asked for. And it, it probably could be also due to the nature of the medium. But then also because of the nature of the show, uh, it requires shooting pieces and, and those concerns as well. Um, it is fun to see a, a great variety. Um, and it's an interesting, it's one of those things that you can observe that the uh, show has transformed over the years. For the first three exhibitions, uh, 1970, um, 71, and 72, they actually received the work. So they shipped the pieces to Minot State. It was juror. It was, so the juror then selected the pieces, and this is the show or ship of the rest of the And it wasn't until 72 that they started receiving slides, slide images. So it was really kind of interesting in that aspect. Um, the, uh, the exhibition started out as the National Print and Drawing Show. And part of that was a consideration that the professor from Minot State that started the show was a printmaking drawing professor. Um, and he did it in, in kind of the same uh, contemporary as, as uh, the Color Print USA exhibitions. 
started around that same time, maybe a few years early. Um, and it was due to the nature of kind of works on paper, prints, drawings, photographs, being easily submitted to these types of shows. I wonder too. Oh, I'm sorry, Greg. I would say it is really neat to see. I, it's, it's really good. And in series, like when we get works in series, we have a couple of selections. We show the show that series, and that's always neat to see. Uh -oh. I wonder too about the restraints on the artists. Um, so if we think about work created within the past two years, a lot of artists have had disruptions um, in access to their studios. Um, they've had to work, you know, from their kitchen tables rather than at their big shared space or maybe even at school or wherever, you know, they're not going to big residencies across the world with their big tubes of paper. Um, we, were, we were working in a very different way as a group. And so I think that remains to be seen. Um, you know, I, I, there will be hopefully history written about this very strange time for um, people making work and being able to get materials or not get materials um, and space for the for studio practice. So that's something else to think about too. I didn't mean to walk away, but I did hear I did hear that. Um, and it, it is kind of a possibility that I mean there is definitely a concerning on um, so many things capabilities and what's maybe more realized by uh, not having access to those tools. And that's especially important for a printmaker working in certain print mediums. Um, I was fascinated by that mild print piece that's on the wall. It's such a great, interesting, uh, unlike kind of I haven't seen anything like that before. <laughs> Yeah, I was really excited about that one. <laughs> so the, and the, the sculptures that you see in front of me here, uh, these are um, you know, it's, it's linen and paper and linen. And those are the two pieces, those, those round whole forms are from uh, uh, artists from France. And I'll have to look at it. Uh, Daniel. Uh, Rogers, I there's also run really interesting in trying to figure out how to display certain works too, like the accordion. Um, and not um, the artist for that one uh, and offering like, you know, if you would like, you could just put it on a pedestal and have it closed and have gloves through it. And, and um, a piece that we really felt had to be out and open just because of the scale of pages and the size. The other thing that I think is, is really interesting about the duration that we have here at Minot State, and we've seen this in the past and also with this exhibition, is the, the range of artists in their careers. 
um, from students, um, even sometimes undergraduate students to graduate students to artists, you know, in the middle of their creation after after getting out of the university or, or having maybe an established career to artists who have um, certainly been making art for many years and, and have um, wonderful uh, command of technique and, and style and the medium. Uh, but it's really cool to see all that together and to have it in one show and yeah, to get that right. And that's particularly what I like about some jury exhibitions that you have some issues. Um, one thing, so with the nature of the short game work from the past two years, um, there are a lot of things in the exhibit that deal specifically with coronavirus, the themes of isolation, or, uh, the effects of, and when you were looking at the work, Susanna, was that you know, something that maybe became apparent in the title for this specific background, um, Michael Fletcher. Yeah, I think I think of these works specifically, actually. So it's nice that we were hovering there, the COVID playground uh, works. So they had this kind of, I think it's called landscape cloth that um, that netting that you see around uh, construction sites to keep people out. Um, so really, like a. a almost the photo photographer maybe was thinking almost abstractly about those forms relating to one another. Um, the guard <laughs> blocking you out of the playground and then um, kind of the, the isolation of the place. Um, it's not a place of play and it's kind of scary and almost looks like a machine or I don't know. That was a, that was an interesting one. I thought also of the um, the big monotype, the multi-panel um, monotype with the tracks um, that look like car tracks in the snow, like backing out or being alone in the snow and then doing you know donuts and turns and the process of you know that's tire tracks are a drawing, they're a relief print um, in and of themselves. Thinking about this kind of repetition of backing out and pulling away, making a turn and pulling away. Something feels, that feels very 2020, 2021, 2022 to me. Um, this kind of repetition, repeated action. Especially with the snow that we're getting, so. <laughs> What's that? Actually with the snow that we're getting. Oh nice. my gosh, yep. My partner Rudy and I were visiting artists a few years ago at Minot State, and um, I ju we just came across. Uh, we were going through cleaning out one of our studio <laughs> spaces, and we found that Rudy had oh. my partner had collected the bristles from the snow plows on campus. Like there's a snow sweeper of some sort. And it would kick off some of its bristles. And so when we were walking around campus in February, um, so probably weather like you have now, Rudy um, and Micah Bloom were just picking them up and collecting them, these discarded bristles. Uh, so we found the collection the other day. We still have it. We need to make a place of honor. <laughs> so so to remind you of 20 below temperatures and uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a really, this is a nice I like this piece as well. It's a, it's a monoprint. Um but it's a reduction, I think it's production work cut for a number of years. Um and she play. Uh, again, it's like a really interesting optical effect with the yeah. color variation and gives the illusion of distance and Wow. 
So we're we're at the end of our exhibition time or reception time at the um, I'm not going to I'm not gonna kick people out, but we'll go ahead and um, go ahead and keep looking at the gallery for a little bit longer here. And then um, we're done tonight. Uh, we'll be posting the awards on our website and sending out the email to the artist who participates in the show. Um, so we'll post the purchase awards. I want to thank you all again for attending the reception. Uh, it's been wonderful to have you here. Thank you very much for participating in the exhibition. Thank you all. Thank you, Ben Susanna. Thank you, Tori. Thank you. Good to see everybody. All right, bye. <laughs> you know, we forgot. Oh, what? Thanks. Oh, you told me that while we were leaving. No, I told that. I told that to you earlier today. Oh, and you're like, we're going back. And I forgot it. I'm not far away. Our apartment is a reusable bag. Yeah, so do we. I wanted to say I saw um, I saw your two prints, of course, and I read the I read the facts of the door. Um, I thought that they were wonderful pieces. And I know you were really accomplished about the BCP, and I was stunned to see that they were your first vinyl. So it was one piece, was the first vinyl. Is there a story? Yes, they were. They were. Thank you. Is there a story behind them? Well, the, uh, the one with the telephone poles, um, that was actually conceived as a um, um, print for a steamroller festival and I, I live in the bay area so that was in san francisco and so it was a small print but they were doing a lot of small prints for the steamroller and so it was printed on the street initially yes. and then uh, i added the second plate oh. later on in my studio uh so that's the actual edition is the colored one but uh it, yeah the that was my second linotype, and it was, uh, it was a challenge because uh, linoleum is much softer than wood. So, to maintain a decent addition that was uh, kind of tough, but it, it worked out fine. To get the, yeah, to get the amount, the numbers in the addition that you need for that the material. That's it. and that one thing that I noticed that too, and then also you know it's just the fine carbon you know, I would always. My next relief is going to be on uh, wood. <laughs> it's more traditional, but uh, I, 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 I'm uh, in awe of uh, uh, relief, especially the reduction. I've seen some uh, in the show. You have some there, but I've seen so many reduction reliefs that it's their mind how they can how their mind can work in that way. <laughs> it's fascinating. Um, there's a. Uh, there's an artist, actually a North Dakota native, uh, that we have in the collection here in Minot State. Um, uh, Gordon, Gordon Wentz. Uh, and he does, he does some fascinating production with it. So, you know, 29, 30 rockets. Wonderful. Definitely. Yeah, and uh, by the way, I was really struck by the best of show. Uh, uh -huh. Metzo, uh, Linda Whitney, I think you said. Uh -huh. um, I, I I was I was struck by those when I saw those initially. And it's just a, a massive amount of work, and uh, good for her. <laughs> it was, it was, um, so she, I met her a few times over the years. She um, with Ed, 
She's been, she was a pretty big professor, um, so familiar with, with Mesotian, but I don't think she started to heavily do Mesotian until uh, you know, she had she retired from teaching, which might have been 2014 or 15. But for, for the last six or so years, I think she's been to shoot for young messages and want of, of that skill. So it's really incredible. Well, I'm sure she'll have an extraordinary show uh, when she has that solo show there. Well, I, I hope you have a wonderful night. Uh, thank you again for entering the show. It's good to see you. All right. Well. So, uh, thank you again. Goodbye.